Our next guest warning that the concept of too big to fail isn't unique to finance. He says it also encompasses uh, technology as evidenced by last week's uh, global tech outage traced to CrowdStrike. Uh, join us now to talk about what can be done uh, about this issue. Jonathan Welburn, senior uh, analyst with RAND. What, what needs to be done uh, in, in your view, Jonathan? It, it just spread the, spread the work out to, to some other players or is it about, I don't know, the right type of cybersecurity? What should we do? Well, yeah, certainly I always will agree with the right type of cybersecurity. I think that is always needed. Ironically, this time, it, this this outage came from a cybersecurity company issuing a an update to its software that caused a large outage. But the, the real challenge that I'm highlighting here is it's not just about market share, that CrowdStrike had a really large market share. It's that CrowdStrike and some of the other companies, especially in the tech sector, have just become either really large, really interconnected, or as we saw with CrowdStrike, really hard to substitute when they do fail, uh, causing widespread damages uh, that can put other things at risk, can put economic security at risk, can put national security at risk. So I think it's about identifying these type of companies that pose this type of risk and really coming up with some of the solutions to manage that risk before we're in a real state of crisis. That's what I was thinking, Jonathan, that um, as, as bad as it was, it, can the, the silver lining be that it was a wake-up call? Because that was like a like a test run. So now we better figure out exactly, you know, how to how to make sure this doesn't happen again. Does it mean in different companies than just CrowdStrike? That's I guess the uh, the point of this this uh, segment. Do, do we need other people involved? Yeah. So I think it's a silver lining as long as we use this opportunity and take that wake-up call and actually move forward and make some progress and. And, and actually you know, managing and, and, and pushing policy on, around the systemic risk. It's not just CrowdStrike. There's you know, dozens to hundreds of companies who are all very central in our highly interconnected economy, and they all could pose this type of risk. I think you, you're absolutely right that with CrowdStrike, we had this blue screen of death that many people woke up to and some people are still facing. Uh, that's not the worst that it could be. So, so, I, I, so I agree, this is, this is this is a potentially a nice opportunity to really put some focus on this. Jonathan, when, when the cybersecurity uh, companies go to, you know, a, a Fortune 500 company and say, look, uh, we got this, we got that, we got, it, it, is it an easy sell or, or is it part of the, you know, does it hit margins when they do it? I, I mean, everybody's spending all this money on AI. I, have, I guess it's going to pay off eventually. But it seems like I would maybe do this with my existing business to get it completely uh, yeah. hack proof or whatever. I would do that. But, but, but is there a hesitancy that, that it, it costs money and, and they, they take shortcuts? Yeah, I mean, with the caveat that I'm over here in research at RAND and not making those decisions at companies, uh, the, the, the reality is I, I, I hope that it's not just looked at as purely a cost, that it's not purely an operating expense that this is this is the necessary uh, this is a necessary thing that companies need to be doing need to be uh, making sure that they're able to uh, protect their systems and defend against cyber attacks which you know, companies are facing every day some companies in the thousands of cyber attacks uh, and and the fact is that you know relying on companies like CrowdStrike is actually a good thing now I think that there should be policies in place to make sure that updates like this one are rolled out, uh, are actually tested before they're rolled out. I'm not sure exactly what happened in this case, but I think that that's a type of thing that could make sure that these, you know, we don't get this type of a widespread outage from a single update. Is there a way to protect against truly, uh, like, horrific I mean, there was never going to be a, the financial system was never going to collapse. It almost did. You know, we we're going to never have a global pandemic again, and, and we did. You know, you read about a, a, a pulse uh, or, uh, let's say, in a, a, a nuclear explosion in the atmosphere above the United States that knocks out the grid. Is there anything that's totally, that we can totally protect against? Is, is there a way to do that, or is that always looming in the future? That, that something like that could still be done? I think the biggest problem is when these incidents catch us by surprise. 
So I think that in time and time again, we we often wait until these the worst happens in order to do something. What I'm really calling for and was calling for in this piece is to kind of look ahead and think about this. We may not be able to predict, you know, that next pulse or that next um, uh, pandemic. However, I think that we can identify the the real choke points. The in, in this point we're pointing to systemically important entities that are out there and pl make plans for how they're able to actually manage that next shock, that next surprise that happens, whether it be a cyber attack or a pandemic, uh, and, and make sure that we're able to make our overall system more resilient. One of the problems that you can see with these types of risks is that they're systemic. They aren't risks that any single organization can manage by themselves because they're going to quickly spread across uh, those from those organizations across their networks, across their company connections, across their products. And so it's not something a single organization can manage. It's not something you can diversify away from. It really has to be, uh, I mean, this is where we really start looking at the role of government in order to manage these type of risks.